All right, everyone, it's pep talk time. We're going to white pill a bunch of people because it seems that a lot of people could use that. We've got wars and rumors of wars. We've got rising crime. We've got social alienation up the ass at the moment. And of course, plenty of economic problems basically everywhere in the world right now. People are still freaking out over monkeypox. I was correct. Of course, those outbreaks have largely petered out already. There's a reason that you didn't hear much about it in the last 48 hours or so, because it's basically just a flash in the pan. There have been such outbreaks before. I wanted to white pill some people, though, because I, I don't agree with demoralization. My ethos, I wrote actually a little book called Emotional Alchemy that kind of touches upon this subject. My idea is that when the going gets tough, it's just an opportunity to get going. Uh, and this wasn't always the way that I lived my life. When I was younger, when you know things went wrong, I would shut down, as many people do. I'd feel sad, uh, unmotivated, de-energized, and so I wouldn't accomplish anything. The problem is that that forms sort of a, a spiral. You get depressed and upset and stuff, so you shut down. The fact that you've shut down and you're not doing anything productive, etc., and, and you're feeling lousy and de-energized, makes you feel more, and then you get more depressed, and, and this is the road to the dark side, basically. It, the idea of emotional alchemy is that instead you can take that negativity, distill it in a, a quasi-alchemical fashion. There's a little bit of a cult metaphor in that particular largely sociological pamphlet of mine. Um, and you can turn it into ambition, build yourself up in positive terms, that is, engage in more positive actions to try to alleviate stress, and then you succeed. Instead of a downward spiral, it's an upward spiral. You feel bad, you work a bit harder, you try to occupy yourself, you do something to elevate yourself above uh, your critics, uh, the economy, whatever it happens to be, some stressor in your life. You elevate your position, things get a little bit better. And then once things get a little bit better and you get that energy, that, that ambition, if, if you tend towards ambition like I do, uh, I, I can be a bit of a workaholic. Again, I transform myself into one werewolf style as opposed to being born in that particular vein. Uh, it, uh, you elevate your position in life. And when you feel better, it's almost, it's almost like a drug. And then you crave more and you self-improve more because you've created a habit. You've created a habit of positive work, positive action, positive thinking, whatever it happens to be. No, I'm not waxing new age hippie-ish. Don't worry. Here's what I hear from a lot of people. Like when I point out that there are problems in society, so you know the government's not going to help you. You have to help yourself. Learn a new skill. Pick up an extra shift. Plow in a couple of extra rows of potatoes and stuff. Do something positive for yourself and preferably those around you, and things in society generally get better. The, the mass action of the public on a large scale, if they took up that basic principle, that effective ethos, would save all of Western civilization. You'd no longer need so much authoritarianism. Damn right you'd have less crime. People would be too busy to be shooting each other because they would realize that there are more positive ways to express themselves that happen to be lucrative. As a capitalist, I believe that that is the main drive. Uh, money is, is artificial, biologically speaking, but it's a stand-in for the survival mechanism, and I believe that it's evolutionarily based and inevitable. There will, will never be a world communist takeover unless they purge everyone, and then eventually it'll collapse back into capitalism at some point. Uh, we're actually at late-stage socialism in certain parts of the world. Don't let them fool you. Uh, the ability of a person to work and produce and enjoy the sweat of their brow is not actually a negative thing. It's not slavery. It's not wrong. It's the perversion of that system that's wrong. And it's not capitalism anymore once it's been warped to the uh, standards of the current Western economies of the world. I hear people say, when I tell them to self-improve, sticks, you're naive. Sticks, I, I can't do that. You're asking too much of people. I ask them what alternative exists, and they can never give me one. It's effectively, it's reliance on a government. It's, it's a never-ending cascade of finding someone who says the right thing, and usually is a grifter and doesn't walk the walk, adulating them, giving them a political position or a position of religious power or social power, donating to them and giving them money, whatever, and not uplifting yourself. If there's no self-improvement, then that movement will necessarily fail. Any movement that's not based in strengthening the individual components of the machine that is the movement, the collective, will fail. It's just a matter of time. People realize this, the elites, the people at the top, and they make a lot of money and they get a lot of power 
playing off of people's potential to say, I'm already, I've already got my job and my education and stuff and things suck. Let this other person handle it. They sound sane. I'm sure that unlike every other human in the world, they don't have any egotistical drive whatsoever. They're basically a Sheol and monk, and they're just doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. Now, there are people in leadership positions that try to help. I identify Donald Trump as one of those people. I think he genuinely believes what he says, even if I disagree with him sometimes, uh, and genuinely does give a shit about civilization. But I look at his presidency, for example, and say he walked the walk much more than past presidents, at least since first term Reagan. He didn't just talk the talk, and I respect him for that. But as I warned years ago, when he was still in the primaries, he would be a mild reformer, by based partially on the separation of powers. He's not God or an emperor or any of these other things, and people still need to do their own thing too. There was never any civic movement, for example. I'm talking just in the political sense at the moment, although this is mostly about self-improvement. There was no personal grassroots civic movement attended to it until the last couple of years to try to spread the power of populism further than simply, hey, we elected Trump, he'll solve everything, let's go home. And so, necessarily, it failed. It didn't work. Towards the end, it was getting better, and, and there were certainly improvements made, but there was so much more that could have been done and should have been done, and it wasn't. Finally, we're picking up the slack, of course. If you watch uh, Trump's NRA address from last night, yeah, he's running in 2024, so he'll probably get a second term. Anyway, I hear people tell me that they can't do certain things. Well, Sticks, you're being naive. I, I can't uh, make more money. I can't learn a new skill. I, I can't do, I can't write a book. I can't find love. You know, people actually they DM me and ask me relationship advice. And, you know, <laughs> I try to help them, but I'm chuckling inside a little bit uh, for various purposes. What I hear when people say I can't do something is I won't do something. And the fact that they think that they can't means that they won't. It's self-fulfilling. They're not even trying. Oh, I can't uh, write a book. Well, you're not even trying. You've convinced yourself not to even bother attempting to do so. They fail once, and because of a lack of fortitude, and it's not usually their fault, society ingrains this sort of defeatist, nihilistic tendencies into people, uh, and then they never try again. And they get the midlife crisis stage, and they regret it. They end up a Beto O'Rourke or something like that. Stop saying that you can't do something. If it is physically within the realm of human possibility for it to be done, you can do it. But you're never going to even start trying if you say that you can't. That effectively, what you're saying is that you won't. You're already limiting yourself. Nobody else is doing that for you. I like it when people are, are they're black-pilled, and they say, society hates our people, society hates people in my socioeconomic echelon, they hate people of my gender, my religion, they hate people of my creed, they hate people of my race and stuff. They're grinding us down. Oh my God! Basically, put a, put a, uh, just stand down, bow your head solemnly, and accept that we've lost. Be defeatist. Be black pilled. And black pilling is like a cancer, and most often it's actually not being astroturf. Some people shill, of course. You <laughs> see some BBC threads once in a while on the internet uh, pertinent to certain ethnic interests in the world. Uh, that's true, but most of these people are genuinely just demoralized. Hard not to be demoralized in the present economy. Uh, of course, I can imagine it sucks for uh, the great vast uh, multitude of people in the world at the moment. But they could self-improve. There are methods by which they can alleviate some or all of their stress and suffering. The key is to convince yourself that that is possible. And then to do something productive, preferably something that you're reasonably good at and interested in. It shouldn't be drudgery because you're not going to keep with it. Take an interest that is potentially profitable, uplifting to yourself and or others, that is relevant, that is potentially of use in some way in your life, and hammer away at it absent, uh, single-mindedly until you have mastered it. When you gain a little bit of success, you will tend to get addicted to it. This is the way to turn yourself into a workaholic. I did that. <clears throat> I was making no money, um, and times were very tough. And due to the enormous amount of economic stress on my household, I said, look, I can sit here and mope and eventually I'm just going to fucking die under a bridge, or I can really get down to brass tacks. And I thought about it. How can I get out of this bullshit? How can I alleviate the situation? I said, well, I'm good with books and I enjoy reading them. 
was all of these out of copyright books and I identified a niche market on Amazon effectively and I started releasing edited works that prior had been either in shitty format or were overpriced and I made them more affordable. And I hit a, a nerve, I guess, because that's, you know, mainly my income now. It's not the uh, Super Chats and the, uh, the donations on Subscribestar and Patreon and stuff. It's the literature, actually. Uh, and it worked. And it alleviated the stress on my situation. There is no more financial stress in that sense. There's plenty of stress. The cat woke me up at 6 a.m. today by attacking your sister, thus waking my baby up. I've got plenty of problems in my life, but, you know, being able to not have to eat ramen or skip a meal, thankfully, is no longer one of them. By the way, I have nothing but sympathy and empathy, I know what it's like, for people who do have fiscal stress. And I tell them, try. Just try to self-improve. And if at first you don't succeed, try again. I know that that's a really cringy old boomerist line, but sometimes it does work. You simply have to believe that it can. If you don't believe that, you're never even going to get off the ground. You're never even going to try. You ensure your own failure. Nobody else did it. It was only you. So stop you vomit up those fucking black pills. Stop being a demoralization cock. Stop being pathetic. In some cases, again, I have empathy for those who genuinely are put upon, but some people are just there to complain. There are content creators who make a very great deal of money doing this. And they never suggest any way, any positive action that people who follow them can take to, to live their lives in a better way. Well, I want the best for the clankers. I want you to be able to afford the good coffee and clank your spoon all day. That's what life is all about. It's all about clanking. So get off of the couch. Don't watch the demoralization tube known as television. Throw your TV out the fucking window. Sell your TV and buy some compost. <laughs> That's my best advice. Shut off the boob tube, and half the demoralization, by the way, goes away almost instantaneously. You'll be happier than the fucking Dalai Lama once you turn off CNN. That's about all. Peace out.